We pray that the, the Lord will give him the strength, the power, the energy, and wisdom for him to be able to lead us tonight. And it's not by his power, his strength, his wisdom, by the spirit of the Lord. So we are going to commit him to the Lord of Jesus, that the Lord will lead him. The Lord, everything that comes down from past Mambo, the Lord is giving him that power. Give him that strength. Give him that uh, that wisdom. We are going to listen to the throne of God. Let us pray for the people in our past Lambo. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Our Father, we thank you. Thank you for the Lord and the people that have come. Lord, I give the mind in the name of the Lord. Oh, my Lord, my God. As a teacher, come out in the office of a leader in the the Bible study. Thank you so much for this powerful prayer. Good evening, uh, Saints of Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Um, Good evening, sir. Elder Usman was supposed to teach us tonight, but he's on working vacation in Africa. So we are so blessed in Mount Zion Fellowship Church that um, we don't have vacuum, and, and God has been so, so, so gracious to us that um, we, he, never leave, he never leave any vacuum. In, in in his ministry so so we thank god uh if you remember last uh, wednesday we talked a lot about uh, all the things that um, eventually happened during the easter season the reason why we celebrated easter who were we celebrating during the easter and uh, funny enough this is, this is something that we are we, are, we have been talking about in uh, first peter Right, right from um, verse 1. And if you remember, last Wednesday, we talked about the, the salvation that uh, even the old prophets, including the angels, they, they were expecting it to come, but when it was going to come, they didn't know. Uh, and then we finished um, last Wednesday in, in uh, uh, verse 12. But verse 13 now says, um, <coughs> Therefore, that is as a follow-up. So we're going to start tonight. We're going to go back again to verse 9. And then, then, then we can see how the, the, the writer of, the, the, of this episode has been building up his argument before he comes to verse 13. So can we just have a small prayer? Father, I thank you, O Lord, for giving us this opportunity to come before your eternal grace tonight. 
I thank you, O Lord, Father Almighty, for using me as an instrument of communication to your children. Father, I beseech thee, O Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, to anoint your message this evening, O Lord, Father Almighty. Anoint my tongue, O Lord. Father, speak through me. I beseech thee, O Lord, Father Almighty, <clears throat> to let every word that is going to be sown tonight find Father grounds in our heart, O Lord, Father Almighty. We beseech thee, O Lord, to consecrate all the hearts that will be joining us tonight and all the hearts that be hearing this good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, for giving us this revelation. We thank you, O Lord, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, O Lord, for making yourself a sacrificial lamb for the remission of our sin. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for all your brethren. We thank you, O Lord, for all the saints that gathered tonight, O Lord. In the name of your Son, O Lord, we beseech thee, O Lord, to touch the hearts of those at home. We beseech thee, O Lord, to continue to give us the zeal, to give us the passion, to give us, O Lord, the, the ability to be able to build a relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. At the end of this session, Father, let all of us have every cause to glorify your holy name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, as I was saying, as I was saying, a lot of questions were asked about salvation. What 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 is salvation? Why why do we need salvation? Can salvation can can we have? Uh, can we go to heaven with our salvation? Why was salvation so important? And that is what the writer was. Saying. So I'm going to read again verse nine from the New Living uh, Bible, which 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 explains it further to us. It, it says in verse nine. He said, the, the reward for trusting him. Or oh, okay, let me, let me let me take it from verse 8. Verse 8 said, You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Apostle Peter was writing to the Jews, he was writing to the to the to the Christian believers that we have been persecuted, that was scattered. All over the Asia Minor. Apostle Peter saw Jesus Christ. Apostle Peter knew Jesus Christ. But all those perse persecuted Christians, because at the time Apostle Peter was writing this epistle, it was almost about 40 years after, after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So he was not writing to the people that witnessed this, the, 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 the three years of Jesus Christ. Because after Jesus Christ was, was um, um, crucified, the disciples, all of them, they, they, they became scared. And, and after the, after the, 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 the uh, stoning to death of the first martyr, which is uh, uh, Apostle Stephen, everybody scattered to Antioch, to Corinth, uh, to, Corinth to uh, everywhere. And they all scattered to Damascus. <clears throat> because if you remember, that that was the time that... Um, and the soul of Tatos got uh, a permission from the from the elders that let me go to Damascus to go and bring back all these uh, Christians that are pro uh, professing the name of Jesus Christ. So they all scattered all over the place. So so that it was only after forty years after Jesus Christ has ascended to heaven that this epistle was being written. So so the apostle so so apostle Peter was writing to the people that heard about Jesus Christ preached to them. But they didn't physically see Jesus Christ. But they heard about it from their parents. They heard about it from their pastors. They heard about it from their people. So, so, so in that verse eight, it said, "You you love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The reward." for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. How do they interpret that one? What, 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 what does it mean by the salvation of my soul? You see, this salvation was something, and then he, he, he went on in verse 10, he said, this salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. The prophet, they prophesied it 400 years before that salvation came. They wanted to see it too, but they, they, they have the opportunity to see it. 
And they wondered what time or, or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about. When they, he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory, glory afterward. They wondered. They wonder what, what when, when, when is, because, because if you remember again, the, the, what I, 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 Prophet Isaiah wrote in, in Isaiah 53, everything that happened during the Easter was written by, by, by Prophet Isaiah almost 400 years before the event took place last, last week when we were celebrating Easter. He said he was being led to the, uh, to the, to the slaughter without opening his mouth. Yes, Jesus Christ didn't open his mouth. He was tried, even Pontius Pilate said, can't you defend yourself? He said he was beaten, he was chastised. He said the strap on his skin was a healing fire for us. In other words, Pontius Pilate beat him and then they crucified him. So all these prophets, they saw, they saw, they saw all this, everything came to pass so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But they longed to see it, but they couldn't see it. So in, in, in verse 12, it said, they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you and me. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preach in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. So it is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Even the angels were eager to, to see it happen. They were waiting anxiously for it to happen. And when it did really happen, the angels were the first to roll away the stone, if you remember. And the angels were the first to, to, to speak to Mary. He said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He said, yes, I already told you that he's going to wake, uh, he's going to be resurrected and he's going to wait for you. In Galilee. So, so, so the angels were there, and, and even <clears throat> when, when Peter and the rest came, they, they found an angel, one sitting in, 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 at, at the defeat, and then one sitting, in, sitting at, the, at, at, at his head. But they just saw the, the, the shroud, shroud, but the body was not there. So, so the angels too were eagerly awaiting this resurrection. So, so, this, so, this, so, so this is what Apostle Paul, I mean Apostle Peter, told these people, told the Jews, told the Christian uh, uh, um, um, persecuted Christians all over all over Asia Minor that they should continue to endure. They should continue to be hopeful for that salvation that to come. So it was, so it was then which he followed up from verse start from verse 13, which we are starting today. Before he said, therefore, after, after, after what I've already said in verse 1 to verse uh, 12, he said, therefore, therefore, prepare your mind for action and exercise self-control. So I'm reading now. I'm going to read first <clears throat> the King James Version in verse, in verse 13 to, 7, to, to 21. And let us hear. He said, therefore, guard up your loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, 
who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. So, 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 so the writer of, of um, um, uh, New, New, <coughs> New Living uh, uh, Translation, he said, be prepare, he said, so prepare your mind. In other words, a guide, a guide that guide, guide your loin. He said, prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So, so what are they talking about? Wherefore, guide up your loins of your mind. What do you mean by loins? If you remember again, Loin is something like in, in, in our own modern days, we have belt. We use belt to hold our pants. We use belt to tie to tie our gown, our garment. But in those days, they don't they don't have belt. They have loins. So loins are that, that kind of a long long uh, um, uh, cloth that that, uh, that if you remember, a uh, 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 prophet uh, Elisha, uh, Elisha told uh, uh, Elisha. Elijah to Elisha, if you see, then carry me away, then you will get your request because a prophet Elisha said, give me double power, give me double of your power. And prophet Elijah said, it is not for me to give you. But if you can see, then when they take me away, and what did the prophet Elisha do? He grabbed the, 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 the garment of uh, prophet uh, Elijah and the loins, that is his bed, that is the, 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 the cloth that he used to hold his garment. Pull, he pulled it uh, 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 off, off, off his uh, garment. So, 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 that, so that, that was what he got. And if you remember, he just, when, when he got to the river where he was going to cross the, the river, he tied it together, beat the, the, the water, the water split into two. So, so those are, those, that, what, that's what we call loin. He said, we have forgot up the loins of your mind. So instead of loins of your garment, he said, loins of your mind. So it's being used metaphorically now, and that is verse 13. As if he has said, Wherefore, since you are, are so honored and distinguished as above, guide up the loins of your mind. You have a journey to go. You have a race to run. You have a, a warfare to accomplish. And you have a great work to do. As the travelers, the racer, and the warrior, and the laborer gather in and guard up their long and loose garment. If you are going to run a race, you roll up your sleeves. If you are going to run, if you are going to, to be a carpenter or a, a, brick, a brickler, you don't go there with your agbada, with your big garment or anything. You don't go there with your buban. You, you have to, 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 to retire your, 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 your garment and everything so, so, so that uh, your, your loose uh, garment will not be caught up in the engine. And that's why you wear apron, that's why you wear uniform uh, 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 on the production of floor because you don't want accident for, for your flowing garment or your, 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 your headgear to get tied up in the, in the rolling machine. So you tie your loin. So that is what he says, say, guard up <clears throat> their long and loose garment that they may be more ready or prompt you see, an expedient in their business, so that so that you you do by so 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 do you by your minds, by your inner man, and by your affection seated there, guide them, control your mind, control your thoughts, gather them in, let them not hang loose and neglected about you, restrain their extravagances and let the loins or the strength and the vigor of your mind be exerted in your duty. Disengage yourself from all that will hinder you and go on resolutely in your obedience. Be sober. That's what he's saying. He said be sober. What do you mean by that? He said be sober. That means be vigilant against all your spiritual dangers and your enemies. And be temperate and be modest in eating, in drinking, in your apparel, in your recreation, in your business, and in the whole of your behavior. So, so be sober means that, be sober does not mean that, that you, should, you, 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 you must look sad or you must look or disengage yourself from anything. No. But you, you can be sober in everything. That is, be temperate in everything. The way you, what you, you used to drink before, 
Some people used to drink alcohol before I used to drink beer, but I don't drink beer anymore. But when I see other people drinking beer, I, I don't I don't blame them because it is not yet their time to find out whether they, they, they should they, they should drop the habit or not. I don't see there's anything wrong in it. There are some, the, the, what you what you eat. There are sometimes because if you remember again what you eat, people may ask questions. Now as Christians, are we forbidden from eating any particular type of food or particular part of meat? We've already discussed that before. We say that it is not what you eat that corrupts you, but what comes out of your mouth. But even then, Apostle, Apostle James, when, when, when this Jerusalem Council was formed about, about, about the, the Gentiles, when, when, when some, some zealot, uh, over, uh, over zealous Jews we are saying, that, that before the Gentiles could be admitted into the commonwealth of Jesus Christ, they have to be circumcised. They have to be like us, to be like the Jews. So it was then that the Apostle, Peter, Apostle James now said, no, that they don't have to be, the, it, it, it is the circumcision of the heart we are talking about now. Not, this, not, 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 not the, the, the physical circumcision did not save you. Because if the, the physical circumcision saves you, they will not have crucified Jesus Christ. They will have recognized Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Because all the people that crucified Jesus Christ were all circumcised, they were all Jews. But it is the circumcision of the heart, the cleansing of the heart, the, the revision, the reformation of the heart. So, so say, say the, the, the dangers don't have, the, the Gentiles don't have to be circumcised, but they must abstain from animals that were strangled, animals that were offered to idols, or even blood. So as Christians too, to, to, be a, to, to live a sober life, you must not eat any, any strangled animal. You must not eat any animal offered to idol, when you know fully well that this animal is, is offered to idol. Even if you eat it accidentally, without, being, without it being disclosed to you, you may say, okay, I didn't know. But when you know that this is offered to idol, you must not eat it. So that's what he's saying. And then in our apparel, apparel is this is another very interesting thing. Apparel. What do you mean by apparel? How do you dress? What are your, what, what are your dress code? When, when you are coming to church, you have to remember that if, if you can dress properly, to your office, if you can dress properly to an interview where you are going to meet fellow human beings who may not even be believers, but you know that when you are going to court to testify or when you are going to an interview, you put on your tie, you put on your shoe, you shine everything and everything, you look well. But when you are now coming to church now, you just pick up any 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 jacket or anything. You just put it on. You look like a ruffian. You don't care because who's going to judge me? Or a, or a, a woman. You come to church with a mini skirt. You come to church. So so that is apparel. That is that is the way you present yourself before God. You see, the, the pastor may not say anything. Or the 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 the, the congregation may the congregation definitely will look at you. They will look at you. Oh, what is wrong with this person? How, do, what do, how does she dress like this? Or how does he dress like this? So that, so that, so that one thing is the conscience is there for us. The way you dress to your office, the way you dress to bank, the way you dress to court, the way you dress to meet people, because you need your help. You should not. Should not then, then we are now coming to God to enter God's sanctuary. How do you want to dress? So that is what he's now saying, your apparel. Then your, your recreation. Your recreation, how do you spend your spare time? How do you spend your hobby? How do you spend your, 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 <coughs> your free time? You go to club, you mix with sinners, or you go to this, you, you, I do gossip or whatever. So your, your recreation is also very, very important. The moment you become born again, you must never engage in I do gossiping. You must never engage in wasting time on I do things. There are so many things to do. So we are so preoccupied. But 
don't 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 let your your recreation reflect glorifying God. How you can benefit? I'm not saying that you must read the Bible 24/7. No, and I must say that I'm not saying that you must talk about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ 24/7. No, but your recreation is also very important, and then your business. Your business be, be God like in your business, be Christ like in your business, and then in the whole of your behavior. So be super minded also in your opinion, as well as in practice and humble in your judgment of yourself, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So after you have tried your best to do all these things, you hope for the grace. That will be coming when Jesus Christ is revealed to you. He's not saying it's not saying at the second coming of Jesus Christ. No, because none of us will be alive when Jesus Christ comes. We'll be dead, but we're going to rise again. But at the revelation of Jesus, when Jesus Christ is made known to your life, when Jesus Christ is revealed into your life, <coughs> that's what he's saying here. So, 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 so that, so that, so some refer this to the last judgment. As if the apostle directed their hope to the final revelation of Jesus Christ, which I don't think so. But it seems more natural to take it as it might be rendered. Hope perfectly, he said, he said hope perfectly or thoroughly for the grace that is brought to you. Or by the revelation of Jesus Christ, that is, by the gospel, which brings life and immortality to light. Hope for perfectly. Hope perfectly. Trust without doubting to that grace which is now offered to you by the gospel. What do we learn from here? One, you see, the main work of a Christian lies in the right management of his heart and, and his mind. The apostle's first direction is to guard up the loins of the mind. Your mind. As we were saying before, if you remember the armor, the, 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 the uh, armor of uh, armor of God, your mind is where the Satan Satan first attack. Because that is where that is where the, 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 the thought of your core emotion is. So 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 that you have to guard against you, you have to tie your loin, the loins of your mind. Two, the best Christians have need to be exhorted to sobriety. These excellent Christians are put in mind of it. It is required of a bishop. In other words, how do you become sober? And, and sobriety, that is the, 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 the act of being sober, is so emphasized, especially in all the previous things that we have studied, the titles, in all of these things. If you remember, what, what, the, what the, quali the qualifications of a bishop, qualifications of an elder, qualifications of deacon and deaconesses. One of them is, one is said <clears throat> in Timothy 3, 2, he said, yeah, they have to be sober. And then of aged men, in Titus 2, 2, they have to be sober. And then also, he, 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 for, for women, he said, the young women are to be taught it, and the young men are directed to be sober-minded. So it cut across ages. It doesn't say older men alone. It doesn't say bishop alone. It doesn't say pastor alone. Got to be sober. Both the young women, both the young men, both the aged, both the older people, both the bishop. Bishop means elders, pastors, uh, ministers. We have to be sober-minded. So and that's what, that, if you remember, that's what we learn in Titus. <coughs> so a Christian work is not over as soon as he has got into a state of grace. No. He must see hope and strive for more grace. When he has entered the, the straight gates, he must still walk in the narrow way and guard up the lens of his mind for that purpose. So, which means that the race, is, the race is not over at all. Because if you remember again, Jesus Christ said that even, he said even the narrow gate, he said we will have to struggle to enter the narrow gate. He said wide are the gate. That leads to hell, but a lot of people will strive and we will stroll into it. But he says, he says you, you should strive to enter through the narrow gates. Even you have to struggle 
to enter the narrow gate. So, so these are parables, these are uh, 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 um, um, uh, paradox that people have to really meditate upon. How can I struggle to enter to the narrow gate? And when I even I enter the straight gate, I see how to pass through the narrow gate again. So number four, I say a strong and perfect trust in God's grace is very consistent with our best endeavor in our duty. We must hope perfectly and yet guide up our loins and address ourselves vigorously to the work we have to do encouraging ourselves from the grace of Jesus Christ. So we must continue to encourage ourselves. We must continue to encourage ourselves. So, so to break it down, before we ask questions, on that, <coughs> on, 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 on that is said, to guard up the loss of your mind is to, to get rid of loose and slobby thinking, which is idle gossiping. To bring the rational and reflective power of your mind under control. It means to control what you think about those things you decide to set your mind upon. This is this is something that, that happens to all of us, isn't it? Because some people all day they may be thinking, 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 they be wondering, you, you, you they, they can don't they don't even know what they are thinking about. And they spend the whole day thinking, thinking. Their, their minds going from, 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 from America to Africa to Africa to South America to they are just just wandering about aimlessly, thoughtlessly. So he said, you have, you have to bring it to that control. He said, be sober. He said, sober denotes a condition free from every form of mental and spiritual loss of self-control. It is an attitude of self-discipline that avoids the extremes be sober, as we have already explained, and there are so many ways in which you can be sober. Then they say, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter has told us a lot about God's grace. He greeted us with grace as we read in 1 Peter 1 2. He told us of the grace that came to us in Jesus, predicted by the prophet of old, as he also told us in 1 Peter 1 10. Now he goes further, writing of the grace that is to be brought to you when Jesus Christ comes back. The only way we will be able to stand before Jesus on that day is because of the unmerited favor he gives and we give to us, which is grace, unmerited favor. Grace isn't just for the past, when we first gave our life to Jesus Christ. It isn't only for the present, where we live each moment standing in His grace, as we read in Romans 5 2. It is also for the future when grace will be brought to us. God has only just begun to show us the riches of His grace. Grace is the unmerited love of God, stooping to save and bless, the source of all those bright and holy gifts which come from His infinite heart. So, so that's verse 13. <coughs> Do we have any question for, from verse 13? Is it, is, it, is it difficult to be sober? No. I don't think so myself. But how, how can somebody be, be, become sober? Be, because one thing, it, it's... Uh, I, I wouldn't say, I, I, was, I, wouldn't say I, I was reckless, but when I was young, I, I was I was a very um, uh, what, what, what language can I use? I, I, I was very adventurous. So so I like to I, I like to experiment. I like to experience all kinds of life. So I joined so many clubs. I joined so many so many so many something I cannot even mention. And I participated in all their activities because I want to know. I was I was so curious. But, it, but eventually, I gave, I gave up everything. So, so, so it, 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 what, what Apostle Peter is saying here, is it referring to us in our adult age? Or, or, or do you think or the, the, the people, the, like uh, the young adults also, can, be, can live a sober life without any problem? Uh, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for expanding on um, on this on this verse. You covered quite a lot of areas here. Yeah. And um, just going back to your question, and when you started earlier, you said therefore, and um, and when it, every time it goes, when the Bible says therefore, you have to go back just like you said. 
That's right. And that therefore was not, he's coming, he was coming from the line of the nature of salvation because when we look back at the, you know, from one to twelve, we're talking about salvation. So we're talking, you know, we wanted us to look at things from the life of salvation. So in, in the text that you just in this passage that you just covered, thirteen fourteen, you know, that you just covered, again, um, Peter was coming up with three things here, you know, which is the one, you know, one is the God of the, the line of our mind. So again, as you said, it's not easy. It is a challenge, but that's an effort that we have to make all the time. It's a conscious effort, you know, for us to guard our minds. And again, as you said, it was to do with the, with the uh, you know, when the, in the back in the ancient days, it used to tie, you know, their robes that they don't trip and fall over it. So what he's saying is that we have to prepare our minds and our thinking. So our minds are so important. I mean, when we look at the the, 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 the armor, one of the sound is the armor of God. The helmet is what protects our our our, our head. You know, so again, what goes in, in our in our mind, what we be assuming what we read, what we we, we 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 look at, you know, all those things will affect our mind. So it's not easy, but we have to to constantly work on that. And the second thing that Peter talked about here was to admonish us to be sober, you know. Again he's encouraging us you know, um, to develop self-control and for our minds to be clear without being, you know, drunk, you know, by the worldly thoughts. Because that's what we've got to be very careful about. You know, so Peter was talking about the worldly thoughts, the things that are going on in the world. You know, we want to experiment, we want to get involved in other things, just like you're saying, involved in other things, we want to learn. I mean, most of us, when we were young, we try to experiment on all sorts of things. But he was, you know, he's trying to encourage us that not you know, to get intoxicated with what they thought. And the third thing that he talked about here was, again, it's about our focus. I wish should only focus on grace, which is to be brought to us through the salvation of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So really what uh, Peter is trying to encourage us to do, because the first the answer of the is, you no, know, it's not easy. You know, because, you know, we are surrounded by, you know, what they think, what they go, what they thought. So it's not easy, the conscious effort that we all have to make. So in effect, you know, he's saying that believers, we need to rest solely upon God's grace and not upon our personal effort. So it's only the grace of God, mm. you know, that is going to help us, right. you know, to be able to, you know, because what Paul is talking about here is calling us for holiness now, you know. So it takes the grace of God, you know, you know, to be holy and holiness is an, is an inside thing, an internal thing, you know. That's right. So that's it. <clears throat> That's right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for that explanation. So, Apostle Peter went further in that uh, verse 14. He said, <clears throat> He said that, um, So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desire. You didn't know any better then, like um, <clears throat> our senior pastor explained to us. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. You must be holy because I am holy. I've had so many pastors, especially reciting this, this scripture, be holy because I'm holy. But how many people really understand what, what uh, uh, Apostle Peter was trying to tell us here that, that this is what God said? You see, as obedient children, these words, these words may be taken as a rule of holy living, which is both positive. But you ought to live as obedient children as those whom God had adopted into his family and regenerated by his grace. Regenerated by his grace, as as the senior pastor said, regenerated by grace, that is only by grace we are admitted. You see, so you must not fashion yourself according to the former laws, according to your wisdom in your ignorance, or the words may be taken as an argument to press them to holiness from the constitution of what they are now children of obedience 
and what they were when <clears throat> they live in loss and ignorance. So what do we learn from here? He said, one, the children of God ought to prove themselves to be such by their obedience to God, by their present constant universal obedience. In other words, it, it, it is something that has to be, uh, 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 you have to be constant in it. It's not something that, it's, it, it's something that you, you, it, you have to develop the attitude to be sober, I mean, to, to be obedient. So that, that so that's what he's saying here. And then, then number two, he said, the best of God's children have had their times of loss and ignorance. Like I said, I had my own. But the time has been when the whole scheme of their lives, their way, and their fashion was to accommodate and gratify their unlawful desires and vicious appetites, being grossly ignorant of God and themselves. Yes. You can't blame anybody. We all have our own past. So that is what Apostle Peter is acknowledging here. <clears throat> we, did, <clears throat> we did it in ignorance. Then number three says, persons when converted, when converted, differ exceedingly from what they were formerly. They are people of another fashion and manner from what they were before. Their inward frame, behavior, speech, and conversation are much altered from what they are in the past. The way they talk, some people cannot talk without swearing. It took, it took, it took me time before they, they took swearing, swearing from my mouth. Because when I'm driving a car and somebody cross me, I swear, piam! When somebody do anything, I swear, piam! But it took time before, before, before when, when, because it's embarrassing for me, I had to stop it. So, so, so you can stop any habit. You can stop any habit. So then number four, the loss and extravagance of sinners are both the fruits and the signs of their ignorance. So, 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 so that what we are now saying is that if you see anybody, you, 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 I don't say you, 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 you must not be, be judgmental or you must never build a profile of somebody because, because, because of his manner, mannerism and everything. But because you, you have to think as a Christian, mature Christian that he has not reached his own time of maturity spiritually. So when, when he has his own personal encounter with Jesus Christ through grace, he will change. All those things, we, 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 he, he, they, they, are, they are his old garments. And he will share them like the blind Matthews. When Jesus Christ was passing through the, the, the street of Jericho. And then they, they, they ask him, okay, stop your mind. He said, I'm not going to stop my mind, Jesus Son of David, have mercy upon me. They say, okay, he's calling you. What did he do? He shed his whole garment. All the garment that was that, that was stopping from, uh, from, from rushing, rush, uh, running to Jesus, he shed them. So, so the day you became a born again Christian, you have to shed all those, which the general Vassar once said, I think he said, buckets, your bucket. He said, we, 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 all, we all have different, different things under our buckets. So, so you drop those buckets. Because, you, because they, they, they become, they, they, it, it's like you, you have lead tied to, 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 to your ankle of your leg and you want to run a race. They will still be pulling you down. So you have to, to drop everything, no matter how attractive, no matter how, 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 how beautiful or, 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 or um, I don't know, so precious to you. That's nothing that is precious to you. That is anything that is going to hinder you from from the, from, from from salvation from from approaching the throne of grace is not is they are all worldly things that you have to shed before you can move forward. So be holy in all manner of conversation. Who is sufficient for this? Who is sufficient for this? And yet it is required in strong terms and enforced by three reasons taken from the grace of God in calling us from his command, it is written, and from his example, he said, be holy for I am holy. So what we learn, one is, one, the grace of God in calling a sinner is a powerful engagement to holiness. The grace of God in calling a sinner is a powerful engagement to holiness. It is a great favor to be called effectually by divine grace out of a state of sin and misery into the possession of all the blessings of the new covenant 
and great favor are strong obligations they enable as well as oblige to be holy. Two, complete holiness is the desire and duty of every Christian. Here is a twofold rule of holiness. One, it must, for the extent of it, be universal. So we must be holy and be so in all manner of conversation. So it's not, it's not be holy in the church alone. When you, when you enter the church, you become holy. When you after the church, so, so it, 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 it's more like uh, uh, Jesus during the day would do at night. No. No. It has to be Jesus Christ day, Jesus Christ at night. So, so we must be holy and be so in all manner of our composition, in all civil and religious affairs, in every condition, prosperous or reverse, towards all people, friends and enemies, in all our intercourse and business, still we must be holy. Two, for the pattern of it, we must be holy as God is holy. We must imitate him. Though we can never equal him, he is perfectly, unchangeably, and eternally holy, and we should aspire after such a state. The constitution of the holiness of God should oblige us to the highest degree of holiness we can attain unto. We must aim for it. It is a necessity. It is a condition. So, number three said, the written word of God is the surest rule of a Christian's life. The written word of God, which is the word of God, which is the word of the Spirit. So, and by this rule, we are commanded to be holy every way. Number four, the Old Testament commands us, it said that we <clears throat> are to be studied and obeyed in terms of the New Testament. The apostle, by virtue of a command delivered several times by Moses, require holiness in all Christians. We must be holy. So, 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 as obedient children, you be not conforming yourself to the former clause as in your ignorance. Fulfilling God's call to holiness requires that we as obedient children, we must break off the lifestyle of the world, which is characterized by loss and ignorance. And but as he who called you is holy, you also must be holy in your conduct, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Now the main idea behind holiness is not moral purity alone. But it is the idea of apartness, apartness. That is the, 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 the idea is that God is separate, different from his creation, both in his essential nature and in the perfection of his attributes. So, but instead of building a wall around his apartness, God calls us to come to him and share his apartness. He says to us, be holy for I am holy. How do we separate ourselves? <clears throat> How do we disengage ourselves? Not from our fellow brethren, but 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 God is apart. So one is said when we when we when we fail to see God's apartness, we begin to believe that He is just a superman. Then we don't see that His love is a holy love, His justice <clears throat> is is God's eternal justice for us. So, so what we are, we, are, we, are, we are now saying is, is that we have to see God the way God sees us. We have to, to trust God explicitly the way God is to us. So we must never take God for granted. And that is what the writer is, is telling us here, that we must be holy. You see, so, so, so it's the holy justice and so on with all our attributes. Holiness is not so much something we possess as it is something that we that we possess us. So in this God <clears throat> of the Bible is radically different from the pagan gods commonly worshipped in New Testament times. Hedeism scattered produced a God who ex <clears throat> whose example was not the most uh, abominable but greatest gods. So, so now he said, and if you call on the Father, if we as Christians call on him a holy God, presumably for help, we must understand that we call on a God who shows no partiality and we so judge our conduct. This makes a working, sober, holy work all the more important. In other words, how can we approach the throne of grace 
with confidence that whatever we ask, he will give it to us without being holy. How are we to be holy? How do we understand holiness? So, so these are the questions we are asking ourselves tonight. Are, are, are we, are, are, because there are some people, they, they, they mistake holiness to mean no hearings to church, uh, your garment must be to your, to your, uh, <clears throat> to your uh, near, your, your, um, you must wear your, your, you cannot stand before the congregation without covering your head, you must do this. Are, 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 are this, are this exercise show? So, so how, who can explain to us what we mean by holiness? How can we be holy? Without, without, without going to extreme or being uh, like a, a um, not, 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 not born again Christian, but, 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 but this, uh, uh, I don't know what they call them now. They, they, when you see them, they, they, they don't even put on powder on their face, no makeup, nothing, and, and, and you think something is, uh, somebody died for them, and, and yet nobody died for them. But the, even, even mother of Jesus Mary does not even look uh, so, 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 so bite like them. So, so, well, how do you understand holiness? How do, you, how, how can Christian be holy without, without being ostentatious or, or without appearing as if to say he is he, bereaved? How do we understand holiness? Auntie Mary, wow. How, do you do you think uh, holiness means that you have to dress to church with your with, with your headgear? You have you don't have to put on makeup. You have to you don't put on your earring. You don't put on your ornament. You you you, 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 you rub your face with oil. Yes, sir. So what 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 do you, what, what standard constitutes holiness? Uh, how do you, how do you judge holiness? Living by the word of God mm -hmm. and being separate, okay. um, try not to, um, not to commit sin. What are, what are, what do you mean by committing sin? Telling lies or? Telling Please, sir. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mary. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Okay. That's right. God is holy. What God cannot do, we should not do it. We should not involve in it. We should be holy. We should be Christ like. God's word says, Jesus says, follow my Christian. That's right. Christ like. Christian means Christ like. Do as Christ do. Study the word of God. Live by the word of God. Make up your mind that you want to live for God. And if you want to live for God, you have to live by the word of God. 
Mm-hmm. She's not involved in things that people will say, is this a Christian? Is this person a Christian or not? It is better. Don't do something that we call somebody to lose faith in the God that we are serving and calling upon. That's right. Because some people do some things, they drive people away from God. They drive people away from the church. These are the things we are talking about. Mm-hmm. Don't do something that will cause somebody else to lose their salvation. Mm-hmm. That's your holiness. That's right. Amen. Amen. Holy Christ. Amen. What have you? We know that. Lying, stealing, involving in a, a, a ungodly affairs. Some people are in love with somebody else, husband and wife. All those things mm. are not of God. Mm. They are not of God. That's true. Mm-hmm. And even if we are not married, mm. a single person, you should find your own husband, marry your husband. If you don't want to marry, stay as you are. If you, if you think you don't want to marry, then don't go out with somebody else, husband or wife. Mm-hmm. Because if you go out with somebody else, and wife sharing sex, mm. it's sin. And that is not holy. That's right. You have to make up your mind to be holy. And you start to say to God that the God will help you. Amen. 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 Can um Thank you, ma'am. Can Pastor can Pastor Mana explain to us? What the uh, what the, the the writer means by apartness that you you you, you that God, God God is apart from all of us. So so how can how can we be apart from 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 one another? Okay, so, I mean the, the question back to Paul I've come to that. Yes, sir. Really but let's go to the difficult level of the Hmm. That's right. Mm. All right, and that's why the New Testament, you know, 
emphasizes this point that we should pursue holiness in this world. All right, we should pursue it. It didn't say His holiness will pursue us. We have to pursue holiness. That's right. All right, and that takes effort. It takes us being obedient to the things of God. It takes us reading the Word of God. It, it, it you know, it takes us, you know, it's where we have to associate with people who are really, you know, spiritually attuned. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's what it is about. That's we have, we have to pursue holiness. The pursuit of holiness in this world and the final attainment of, of, of holiness in this world to come. So everything is pursuing holiness. So yes, it is, it is not just you know, a possibility. It is a requirement that we be holy. So, so some Christians say, well, we can't be holy. We're not God. Yes, we're not God. God is inherently holy. So we can also be holy. And it's not an outside thing, just like what Christiana said. And I, I remember when she was preaching, she called it the outside, the outward holiness, mm -hmm. or outside holiness. Yeah, that's what God is looking at. Holiness is within, like it's inside. So that's my share on that. So, <clears throat> so it, holiness is not it's not a, a spiritual gift. It, it, it's um, it, it's something you have to develop, isn't it? Can can you work on it without without aid? Or you have to be assisted. No, you have to. <laughs> Daddy, I've said it already. You have to make up your mind. <laughs> you have to make up your mind. 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 It's not easy. It's not easy. Alright? No. It's not easy. It's not easy. Alright? Because we are also human beings. Sometimes the flesh wants to kick in, alright? But it's a constant battle. But the more you, 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 I mean, let's take Joseph for example. Joseph could have slept with Potiphar's wife thinking that was the sword that opened for him to go to, you know, okay, that's a good example. She wasn't going to tell anybody. She was going to keep quiet about me. How can she go and tell her friend that she slept that's with me? Example. You know? But, but what Joseph demonstrated there was holiness. Because the eyes are God. Nobody was there. Not, not, somebody doesn't have to be there to be holy. It's between mm -hmm. you and God. Uh, so, 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 that one is a very good example because it, it, it sort of answered the question I was going to ask. That um, holy development of holiness is it a collective responsibility on 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 an organization like a church to help one another? But now you you mentioned Joseph. And Joseph didn't have that fellowship with anybody, not church, not his, his brethren. So are we saying that holiness, because Joseph now is a different case. And, and, and but what I'm just trying to find out, it's uh, can holiness be developed through the assistance or through the collective responsibility of the people you move with? It, uh, say for example in the church or, or something like that or it is something that you have to personally develop yourself whether whether anybody help you or not iron sharpens iron so if, you, if, if I want if, if the choice is mine I can decide who I want to associate with in the church it's entirely my choice God has given us a choice That's right. but if I'm going to associate myself with somebody in the church who when I finish talking to you I'm going I will never call you again. Mm. If I'm a show with somebody in the church, I might put and I finish up with my put it down. Mm. My feel just worried about somebody, I'm not going to call you again. That's right. I refuse to call you. Because at the end of the day, I have to answer to God, not you. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm very careful who I have to call myself. The calls that I made before I call and I talk to are people I have chosen to talk to. That's right. Because I know when I finish that conversation, and I'm very, very conscious of that. That's right. So I'm not going to call somebody who's going to tell me about other people's business. I don't want to hear about other people's business. Because all you're doing is putting a burden on me. That's and right. And you my spirit. Because now you're telling me something about somebody I didn't know. Now I know something about somebody I know that I have to transmit a secret. That's a burden. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Christ. Let's talk about, you know. And that's where there are few people like God. So, yes, it could be collective, but that choice is yours. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. When you get used to them, they will be charged. That's true. Well, you have to sit in yourself and say, How many times do you spend in the Word of God? Hmm. Do you make it effort for the Word of God? Hmm. And those are the questions we ask ourselves as Christians. That's right. I mean, I, I, I can fool you, all right, but I cannot fool myself. Mm-hmm. I can be saying all these things, but I don't even do it. But God knows, you know, whether I'm lying or not. That's right. So at the end of the day, we have to take the ring. We have to be in charge of our mind, because all in the mind, that's mm-hmm. where the devil gets into. That's right. If you don't, if you don't, put, going back to what we were talking about in, 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 in the first Peter chapter 6, the first 13 and 14, the apostle, which we really elaborated mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. okay, you talk about the helmet. We have to guard, that's what we are, the armor. We never take the armor off. That's and we right. have to guard our head. So the devil, the devil plays mind games. Mm-hmm. Who do you talk to? That's right. The question is when you finish talking to that person, how do you feel? Mm-hmm. And when do you call again? Because mm-hmm. you are feeding into something and that thing is gaps in your spirit. Now how are you going to be holy, which is a requirement, you know, because it says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's true. Hebrews twelve fourteen. But my word is the word of God. That is true. Thank you so much, sir. I'm sure we are all blessed tonight. I am blessed. Yes. I'm more holier now. <laughs> Pastor Luciana, can you bless, can you see, can you pray for us tonight? <laughs> Can you close us in the can you close the prayer for us, please, Pastor Luciana? The grace together. Amen. The grace. The grace. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and the love of God. And the safe fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest with me and abide with us all. Now forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much.